Good morning, welcome back to the solution videos to the 2021 Facebook Hacker Cup. This is problem B of round two. So this is the problem chain block, which is a throwback to the problem blockchain from an earlier contest. Uh, in both of these problems, you're given a tree, and this represents the distribution network of some, some roads and some cities of an ore mining company. So you're gonna attempt to sabotage one of your competing, competing companies. Um, and they also have this, this sort of tree. And what you wanna do is destroy some of the edges in this tree in order to separate the company. So previously you wanted to destroy just one road in order to hurt the company in the worst way possible. Uh, however, you realize that that's, uh, that's illegal. And if you get caught, that's a big problem for your business. You might have to pay some taxes and some fines and you don't wanna have to deal with all that. And the reason they might catch you is because they've installed radio transmitters at each of their, their locations. So for instance, we might have radio transmitters at frequency one in these two locations. So if you were to break this edge or this edge, they would know because uh, along these paths from these two ones, they could say, hey, uh, we can't reach you, which means someone must have, have broken one of the edges of our tree. That's a, that's a very big problem. Um, similarly, if we try to cut this edge, then uh, we would also get caught and we'd have to pay a bunch of taxes. So we don't want to we don't want to do that. So the question for this problem is what's the most number of edges you can destroy so that you can still uh, destroy as many edges as possible without getting caught. In this example, we would want to destroy this edge here, this edge here, and this edge here. Uh, and then also we can destroy this edge here too. Uh, we might have a slightly more complicated example though. Maybe instead of this being a six, we had a two here. So if that were the case, now, not only can we not destroy any of these two edges, we also can't destroy this edge or this edge because this two could connect to this two here. So in this case, the answer would decrease um, from four all the way down to two. We would only be able to destroy the two edges that I still have crossed out. All right, so how do we solve this problem? As with a lot of tree problems, we'll start by arbitrarily rooting the tree. So I chose to root the tree from, from node one, but you can choose any node you want. Uh, and then to make this picture a little simpler, we'll choose the root as this node, and then all we have to do to make it look like a rooted tree is move this node here. And now boom, looks like we've got a rooted tree, right? Where the parent is the, the node above you. So now any node can have, um, can have some, any node can have, have some children. It doesn't have to be a binary tree. It can be any tree we want. Um, however, we have this interesting property, which is between any two nodes, any of the edges along those paths need to be kept. So we're gonna maintain this in some way and then figure out after we maintain this, which edges haven't been marked as something that we need to keep um, at all by any, by any pair of nodes. So let's look at this once for each type of frequency. And then uh, we'll do this all together when we really solve the problem. But for understanding how our solution works, let's just focus on one type of frequency. So I'm gonna erase all of the numbers except for the numbers that are a one. And then we'll think about how we can solve this problem in this case. So maybe uh, we'll make the ones be, be these nodes here. So in this case, um, the paths that we're interested in include this path here, uh, this path here, and this path here. In particular, in a rooted tree, any path will go from some node, let's consider that from this node to this node, any path will go from some node to the lowest common ancestor back to this node. So the path is gonna go up once and then it's gonna go down. Uh, let's look at how far up does a path go from any node to the farthest node away. Right? What is the highest, the farthest up it'll go from, every, from any node here? And it turns out it's never gonna go higher than the lowest common ancestor of all of these one nodes. So we're definitely gonna protect the edges from any node here all the way up to the lowest common ancestor of all of these, the lowest common ancestor of all three of these. Um, and you can see pretty clearly, that's exactly all of the edges that we end up keeping. Right? We'll keep all of the edges all the way up to this low, lowest common ancestor and there's no way that we would go down from some node if there's no node below it to go up from. So we're only gonna go up from each node and we're only gonna go up all the way to the lowest common ancestor of everything. 
Um, we could add another one here for simplicity, right? Just to, or for, for completeness, I guess. And the lowest common ancestor is still this node here. You can imagine it might even have a, it might even have a parent, right? But it's still we only go up to this node, uh, and we do it from from this node too. So now those would be the edges we protect, and anything not here we would be safe to delete as long as it's not protected by any other frequency. Okay, so how do we actually implement this, and how do we do it efficiently? Um, there is a, a pretty classic way of finding lowest common ancestors. We can do that using binary lifting, and I'm not going to explain binary lifting in this video because um, I made a separate a separate video on it, uh, and it's a bit complicated, and probably most of the people who were able to make it to this round might be familiar with it. If you're not, that's totally okay, um, but that's just kind of a, a separate thing to learn. So I'll, I'll have a video in the description of where you can learn binary lifting. Uh, but you can find the lowest common ancestor of two nodes using binary lifting, and to find it of, of n nodes, we'll just take the first two, find their lowest common ancestor, that'll give us some node here, then find the lowest common ancestor of this and this, that'll give us this, and then this and this, and that'll give us this. Just like finding the min of a bunch of numbers, you just take the min of two, and then you keep a running min. So this will give us the lowest common ancestor. Now we have to say, how do we keep all of these paths, right? How do we mark all of these paths as being kept? And you can do this using a bunch of methods. You can use a very complicated data structure. You can use something like HLD, but all of those are kind of overkill for this particular problem. An easier way of doing it is saying, let's give, let me erase some of these black lines here for a moment, some of these circles. Let's give each of these nodes that have a one in them, let's give them like a plus one bonus, right? So we'll say we have a plus one here, we have a plus one here, a plus one here, and then a plus one here. And even if the LCA had a plus one, we'd give it a plus one as well. And then what we can do is we can give a negative bonus to the LCA. So one, two, three, four, these all have a plus one. Since there are four ones, we'll give a minus four to this node here. Now what this tells us is if we look at some subtree, maybe we'll consider this subtree here. If we get the sum over this subtree, we'll get a sum of three. And what that means is there are three edges that start in the subtree, but don't end until above this subtree. Since the sum along this edge is positive, it's three, that means this is protected three times. Now let's consider this subtree here. This has a sum of one plus two plus three plus four minus four. So this has a sum of zero, which means this edge is protected zero times. And then finally, we'll do one more example, which is this subtree here. Uh, obviously this has a sum of zero plus zero. So this edge right here is also protected zero times. So this is how you do it for one frequency. Um, but really these frequencies work together, right? So we've added these plus ones for the ones, but if we had twos as well, we could add other plus ones for the twos and then subtract from uh, whatever the LCA of all of the twos are, whatever the lowest common ancestor of the twos are as well. And that's a, a very clean way of implementing this solution. So hopefully that made sense. Again, if you're not familiar with, with finding the lowest common ancestor of some nodes on a tree, um, I'll have a video for that in the description, which you can check out. And that's a great thing to practice to get better competitive programming. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and hopefully this helps solve the problem if you weren't able to solve it. Have a great day, and uh, good luck in the next contest if you qualified.